Red Bull now trail McLaren in the Constructors' Championship with only six races to go. And according to one of the key figures in the Red Bull squad, Sergio Perez is to blame for all of it. So who is this Red Bull figure? And how will this affect Perez's future with the team moving forward? All that in today's video, so stick around. Ricciardo was initially seen as the top contender to replace Perez at Red Bull, but last week, the team announced that Liam Lawson would finish out the remaining six races of 2024. Even with Ricciardo out of the picture, Perez's spot isn't guaranteed. Red Bull boss Christian Horner hinted that Lawson might be considered to pair up with Max Verstappen. Although Perez signed a multi-term contract earlier this year, it hasn't translated to improved performance. His ongoing struggles have contributed to Red Bull losing the top spot to McLaren. Despite being given another chance over the summer break, Perez only managed a 10th place finish in Singapore. As Perez's issues persist, Horner emphasised that Red Bull's decision to make a mid-season driver change is centred around resolving their second driver dilemma. We need answers for the bigger picture in terms of drivers, Horner told the F1 Nation podcast. And with six races remaining, it's the perfect opportunity to line Liam up alongside Yuki Tsunoda to see how he performs over the remaining six Grands Prix. This goes beyond V-Carb. It encompasses Red Bull Racing. Obviously, we have a contract with Sergio for next year, but you've always got to have an eye out in terms of what comes next. Is that going to be Liam? Marco, who had lobbied to land Lawson a permanent spot on the grid, has also insinuated that Perez's position is not secure next season unless his results improve. There is only a guarantee in Formula One sport if you perform accordingly, Marco said. Perez kicked off the season strong with four podium finishes in the first five races, helping Red Bull establish a big lead over the competition. But things took a turn after the Chinese Grand Prix. The six-time F1 winner hasn't made it back to the podium since, as Red Bull's recent issues hit him harder than Verstappen. Perez has fluctuations, we know that, Marco highlighted. Especially when the car is modified at short notice, it takes him longer to adapt. That is certainly one factor why McLaren is currently stronger than us in terms of driver pairings. In terms of speed, he can do it. He just has fluctuations that are becoming more and more unpredictable. This year has been a rough ride for Sergio Perez, with constant speculation about his future in F1. Even now, after Red Bull chose Liam Lawson to replace Daniel Ricciardo for the final six races of the year, rumours swirl that Lawson could be Max Verstappen's teammate in 2025 if he performs well enough. Despite Perez signing a new OnePlus One deal in June that seemed to secure his spot for next year, Lawson's promotion has cast new doubts. Perez hasn't won a race this season and hasn't been on the podium in the last 13 races. He's currently languishing in eighth place in the Drivers' Championship, almost 200 points behind teammate Verstappen. A recent Racing News 365 poll named Perez the biggest disappointment of 2024, with 33.58% of the votes. That's more than double the votes received by the runner-up Stake, whose drivers Valtteri Bottas and Zhou Guan Yu haven't scored a point this season. Going back to talking about Red Bull, the reigning champs were on track to dominate once again, with Verstappen clinching seven wins in the first ten rounds. But the tides have turned. In the last eight races, Verstappen hasn't seen the top spot, marking his longest winless streak since 2020. Red Bull's drop in performance, paired with Perez's struggles, has allowed McLaren to snatch the lead in the Constructors' Championship. Red Bull hit rock bottom at Monza, with Verstappen calling the RB20 a monster due to balance issues, landing him in a distant sixth place. Yet Horner views their experiment in Italy as a crucial turning point. It exposed development missteps, offering a valuable lesson for the team. We already could see the issues, but I think what Monza really exposed was perhaps some of the root cause, or help to identify the root cause of the issue, he said. So I'm taking Monza as the low point and we're starting to build out of that. Red Bull has bounced back since their struggles, with Perez showing podium-worthy speed and Verstappen snagging a surprising second in Singapore. Although it's a far cry from their earlier performances, Horner is optimistic. With upgrades on the horizon, he believes Red Bull is heading in the right direction once again. The 22-second gap to Lando Norris in Singapore was significant in the first part of the race and we've now got the best part of a month to work hard and try and bring some performance to the car in Austin, he added. When you consider where we were a couple of weeks ago, I think we have made some real progress. We've got a vein of development, and we've understood some of the issues with the car. I think we're starting to address them. We were better in Baku. We were better here. So, there'll be a lot of late nights in Milton Keynes. The McLaren is the benchmark car at the moment, and we have a bit to catch up, 
but we've got the people and the capability to do that. Horner's determination is clear. Red Bull isn't throwing in the towel on the Constructors' Championship. They're also focused on maintaining Verstappen's 52-point lead over Norris. It's a battle until the very end for them. I think that we're going to fight all the way to the end of the championship with 52 points ahead with six races to go, he insisted. With a lot of races, a lot of points on the board. So, you know, there's a lot of racing still to happen. We're certainly going to be fighting hard through the next triple header and then the final triple header after that. Lando Norris dominated the Singapore Grand Prix, transforming his pole position into a commanding 21-second victory over Verstappen. McLaren has taken the spotlight this season, clinching three wins in the last four races since the summer break, pushing Red Bull out of the top spot. This resurgence from McLaren has paralleled Red Bull's sharp decline, with Verstappen unable to secure a win in the last eight races, his longest drought since 2020. Helmut Marko mentioned that McLaren's significant lead over Red Bull was the main topic of a lengthy phone call with Verstappen, who currently holds a 52-point lead. While that Lando's dominance is alien, especially on medium tyres, he took nine-tenths to one second per lap from us, Marco told formel onedd Even if our car had been, let's say, optimised, he couldn't have driven those times on the medium, and we're all wondering how he did it. When Norris takes nine-tenths to one second per lap from us, then it's a whole new world. And don't forget, in the second stint, Charles Leclerc was just as fast as Lando, or almost a bit faster. So for us, I would almost say that second place was like a victory. Red Bull hit rock bottom at Monza, with Verstappen branding his RB20 a monster due to its balance issues. Marco echoed this sentiment, emphasising that Red Bull must focus on getting the car back into the sweet spot that maximises Verstappen's performance. It was the worst race since... I don't know. I can't remember when we got it so wrong in terms of strategy, pit stop, speed, everything, Marco acknowledged. But we are now on the right track. The car needs to have a wider operating window, not one where relatively small changes or temperature differences of 6 or 7 degrees can affect performance. Then more speed and also more bandwidth so that Max can attack. We know that he needs a car with front-end bite. Red Bull's subtle upgrade in Baku last month sparked a slight uptick, leading to Verstappen's unexpected second-place finish in Singapore. While the revised floor eased some issues, Marco emphasised that the forthcoming updates are essential to closing the gap with McLaren. Here's hoping those changes bring back Red Bull's competitive edge. It is a step in the right direction, but it is not enough, he highlighted. They have worked very, very hard and have gained certain insights. It wasn't a completely new floor, but parts of it were new. But I think the deciding factor will be performance in Austin, and there are a lot of other things coming. So do you think Red Bull can turn their season around with only six races left this season? And will Perez be able to hold on to his seat at Red Bull after it's all said and done this season? Let's chat about down in the comments section. That's all for today, so thanks for watching.